When we're buying something at the grocery store, we assume it to be what it says it is on the label. But if you have watched any of our videos, you know that that isn't always the case. Today, we are diving into the murky waters of the fishing industry to understand why so many people are getting catfished at the till. So over the past few years, we have seen a lot of headlines like this. Fish fraud is afoot. Almost 40% of fish sold in markets and restaurants around the world are not the kind of fish that it says on the label. Canada and the UK have the highest level of fish fraud hitting almost 50%, followed by the US. Seafood is heavily traded internationally, often through complex supply chains with little transparency involved. So there are a lot of opportunities for mislabeling. So in many situations, the mislabeling is slight. For example, this is a farm salmon labeled as a wild salmon. But in some cases, they do DNA tests and it comes back that these aren't even the right species. However, for today's video, we are going to be focusing on salmon because it is one of the types of fish that is most frequently mislabeled. And as one of the most popular fish sold globally, it represents a lot of the issues going on as a whole. So this was my assumption coming into this video. Salmon is in demand and wild populations are struggling in a big way right now. So people are getting a little creative with their labeling to meet that demand and make a buck, right? Well, that is partially true and the rest is way crazier than I would have ever expected. So it turns out the majority of mislabeling that happens to salmon today is farmed salmon posing as wild salmon. In North America, when it comes to salmon specifically, it was found that a lot of the mislabeling actually happens in the winter when salmon is out of season. A lot of this is happening in restaurants more than in supermarkets, just so you know, partly because restaurants are often more prone to being victims of fraud, but also because grocery stores need to comply with a country of origin regulation. So 69 percent of the time, nice, it's farmed salmon being passed off as wild. So when we got into this, I was sort of thinking, wild salmon, you know, it's like a fish caught on a line, lured onto a boat, beaten with one of those fish bonkers, filleted, and then brought to the grocery store. But the reality is very different. Remember that the demand for salmon globally is massive and growing every single year. And if we only ate wild salmon, we would have fished it to extinction, and we quite literally almost have. Turns out, even if you got on a boat today and went out and caught your own wild salmon, chances are it's going to be a stocked fish from a nursery that was released back into its spawning grounds to try and rehabilitate the natural populations that have been dropping like crazy. So what do we do as humans when we fish something nearly to the brink of extinction? We don't just stop fishing it as intensely, we just start farming it too. And this is where things got really intense. We wanted to be able to just say in this video, you know, farm salmon is bad, wild salmon is good. But in our research for this video, we found tons of conflicting data, stories about censorship and intimidation, corporations suing governments just to be able to farm fish. I mean, it got crazy. And there is a few great podcasts that we would recommend that you listen to. They're linked down in the description because there is way too much information to fit into a simple video. So what we're going to try and do here is answer one simple question. Why does farm salmon so badly want to be seen as wild salmon? Fish farming in general is an industry called aquaculture. And aquaculture is actually not that new in the grand scheme of things, but it has recently had a revitalization which has garnered a lot of skepticism and concerns about what methods are being used that have been widely publicized beyond the scientific community. It only took like a minute of research to learn that most of the drama today around salmon farming comes from salmon farming in open net pens. And this one form of farming has given the whole industry a bad reputation. Because aquaculture has been a part of human society since 2000 BC, and we've developed a number of ways to do this, and some are a lot better than others. But the salmon farms that have gained this notorious reputation along the coasts of Canada, Scotland, and other parts of Europe are open net pen salmon farms. Open net pens are considered the highest risk form of aquaculture, and they have only really been around since the 80s. They basically hold the farmed fish in these big nets in the open ocean, often in prime salmon habitat, which on one hand seems like it would be really nice, right? Because they get to be a part of their natural ecosystem, sort of. 
But actually, open net pens have had a devastating impact on wild salmon populations. This method decimated Scotland's wild fish populations in the early 2000s and has been deeply concerning Canadian ecologists for a long time. The main issue being that water flows freely between the pens and the open ocean around them. Whatever happens in the pen impacts the wild populations nearby. There is a lot of great research that shows an increase in infestations like sea lice that kill juvenile wild salmons and farmed fish escaping transmitting other problems to the wild populations as well so the bad reputation is well deserved in this context but bad press was not going to stop these companies with these farms the fishing industry spent years putting huge amounts of money and effort into covering this whole situation up. Despite huge scientific evidence, governments have ignored this issue and biologists have been censored or threatened for speaking out against open net pens. Indigenous groups have actively called for the transition away from open net farming technology and the industry continues to push back. So, and now we're getting back to the grocery store in your life, okay? Because of these headlines and a general aversion to farm meat, as we're going to talk about in a second, people shop for wild salmon to feel better about their dinner choices, even if they don't fully understand the difference. But in a weird twist on our usual content, we have some good news on this subject potentially. Due to all of this research and the activism of local indigenous groups, Canada is currently in the process of closing all open net pens and moving to on-land containment systems by 2025. This is great news, but getting here costs the industry a lot in terms of public image, and in the process we might be tossing the fish out with the bathwater. So perhaps the industry is changing a little bit, but the demand for salmon is not. So what does this mean for you if you see fish on the shelf or on your sushi menu? Well, in general, probably not that much. Chances are you've already been eating farmed salmon most of the time already. This is because of all the mislabeling issues, but also because you probably didn't know that there was much of a difference or that you were even buying farmed salmon in the first place. But the industry is going to change. And that means that what you eat is going to change too. People have a lot of opinions about food, where we get it, how it is raised, and how to prepare it, of course. Meat technologies in particular are met with more skepticism than other food innovations. We want our flesh meals to be as natural as possible, and fair enough. And even though we know all of the ecological and ethical reasons not to support factory farming, plant-based foods have not replaced meat. And as we have said time and time again on this show, consumers will pay a premium for food that seems healthy, sustainable, and natural. So there is a lot of yelling going on at the table, and the reality is most of us just want to eat something for dinner. So what the hell is the difference? The difference between wild and farmed salmon is depth. See, the science technically agrees that farmed and wild salmon have similar nutrition levels on a few key markers. Amino acids and protein levels are basically the same. And even though farmed salmon have less omega-3s, they have a higher ratio of omega-6s, which are also great for your brain and your heart. But all of this kind of misses the point. We've already seen this play out with our other industrially farmed foods. Other industrially farmed meats, fruits, and vegetables look different than their free range small-scale counterparts and don't taste nearly as good. If you don't believe me, eat an in-season strawberry from your garden and then compare it to the baseball-sized strawberries from a factory farm in Florida. In many cases, people say farm salmon doesn't taste very much like salmon, which says a lot. And there is a lot of concern around farmed meats. One of them being that salmon is being pumped full of antibiotics, but antibiotic use is actually on the decline pretty much everywhere. These levels will obviously vary based on where the fish came from and whatnot, but there is actually less antibiotics use in aquaculture than there is in other animal farming. And look, we all eat industrially produced vegetables and meats today. I live in Canada. We, we don't have the ability to grow our own food year round. This is just the way that our society has evolved to be able to feed as many people that there are on earth. We don't have the time in this video to do a deep dive on all the intricacies of this industry, but look at these pictures of a wild and farmed salmon side by side. A crazy fact is that farmed salmon is naturally white, but farmers add something called carotin carotenoids.
to their food because it's a crucial part of their diet and also because it gives the fish that salmon color. This is often done using natural ingredients like ground crustaceans, but there are also carotenoid additives derived from algae. So it's not like the red dye as some rumors have suspected, but it does paint a picture of the reality that these fish are not the same as the wild ones that you think you might be eating. And it makes sense when you think about it. A wild salmon spends most of its life swimming thousands of kilometers, eating foods from a variety of places, interacting with its environment and fellow fish homies in a normal way. Farm salmon are raised in pens with hundreds of other fish, fed pellets made of other fish and plant matter. Now, if you think that it's dumb to catch fish, to harvest food, to make other farmed fish, I would agree with you, and that seems like a terrible waste of energy, but this is sort of beside the point, it doesn't really seem like a very good recipe to make good fish, does it? All right, but my personal skepticism and perspective aside, when you zoom out for a second, you can see that this was kind of inevitable. Bad public image combined with the pressure of catching fish in an extinction era, plus low regulation in a fishing industry, creates a shit ton of motivation for them to lie about their product. You can catch a cheap fish, fillet it, and sell it as an expensive fish, or farm a fish and then slap wild on it to make a premium. This leaves consumers in a weird spot when you're standing in the grocery store. But here is a few ways that you can make it a little easier. Shopping from a small local business who knows their supply chains well is a great place to start. As we mentioned earlier, mislabeling is the worst in the winter, so do the right thing and eat in season. And a really good way to tell that what you're buying is what it actually is, is price. If the wild salmon is weirdly cheap, it's probably not wild. And if it costs more money and you're wondering how the hell a fish could actually cost that much, then it's probably the real thing. In many cases, the labels that you see on your grocery store shelf fish are created based on what the supplier has been provided. And as we mentioned earlier, these things are regulated pretty strongly, but can be misrepresented. But there are some third-party certifications that you can look for when picking up your dinner. In Canada, the OceanWise labels show that a product is considered sustainable in terms of ocean health. Their website has a lot of good info about ocean sustainability, and they even have this nifty search function that lets you see sustainability ratings by species. In the States, Seafood Watch does a similar thing. The Marine Stewardship Council does eco certifications for wild fisheries, and the Aquaculture Stewardship Council does the same for fish farms. But realistically, this is an industry industry issue more than an individual one, and the solutions here are legislative. So while we can remind you that you should just buy fish when it's in season or just avoid fish at all if you really want to make your life easier, do what works for you and just try to do the best that you can. I hope that this mess of information helped you or at least gave you some new perspective on this, and of course if you want more resources we have them linked down in the description as always. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. We'll see you every single week for another episode.